Hello, welcome to this quick teacher tips video where we're going to share some insight and advice for how to lead a boat project session on your own. I probably should not say the word session singular because by the time we share the videos, build the boat, and test it, it's usually about two hours worth of programming that this boat project takes. This tends to be one of the favorites amongst the kids, and for us as teachers, it's really neat because there's absolutely no correct answer. Kids take this project all kinds of ways and really showcase their creativity. You will see two completely different working and looking boats that both perform well. We try to give them a heads up in the videos, but a big task for you as the teacher is you need to make sure that what they're building fits inside whatever it is we're testing the boats in. I've seen it a ton of times where the kids build their boats too big for the basin or tub that we're testing in, and they can't really test it, and it really bums them out. Speaking of this testing basin, what we recommend to do is send a couple students who are ahead in their project to go to the restroom or to find a sink on campus that they're aware of and fill this up just about halfway or enough where you think it's distinguishable enough where you can tell that the boats sink. As far as the videos that we put together go, we strongly recommend that you go ahead and watch those beforehand to familiarize yourself with the project and take some mental notes of where those videos pause so you can be prepared to ask those inquiry-based learning questions that we pose to the kids. And when those videos are all done, we recommend that you display the gallery section of the project page onto the projector or screen so the kids can see some examples as they're building. A big thing that Styx tries to emphasize in our programming is the engineering design process. One of the first steps in that process is the brainstorm step. Before the kids can come grab their materials and start building their boat, we'd like for them to get their designs and ideas down on paper. Before they start building, they need to relay that design to you in order to get the green light to grab their materials. Speaking of materials, we recommend not passing out any aluminum foil until the students are done with the shell of their boat. That should be some of the final steps of it and it helps keep things a little more organized in the classroom. If they're having any trouble cutting the cardboard, the chipboard is an easier to cut and great alternative for them to try out. If the project happens to be running a little early and you need some ideas for how to fill in the time, no worries, here's some tips. And the same thing goes for if you're running late. Here's some ideas for how to speed up the process, but still stay on task. On the safety side of things, for this project, please just make sure the students are using the materials and the scissors responsibly and being careful with the hot glue, and if applicable, using the finger sleeves so they don't burn themselves. When cleaning up, go ahead and put any unused or reusable items back in the bin so we can get them back and recycle them for future projects if necessary. So thank you so much in advance for your time and for all you're doing for these kids. We hope this was insightful and if any questions pop up after watching this, please do not hesitate to reach out. And also, after doing the project, if you have any ideas or suggestions, we're always open to hearing those. We want to continue to making our projects better for both you as the staff and of course the students.